you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I came across this meme this week. Anybody feel this way? Just if you can't, it's not a super clear picture. Me, I have to look at it for a second to figure out what's going on there. Uh, the orange uh, on the orange guy it says life. On the little guy trying to hang on to the back of the motorcycle, it says me doing the best I can. Yeah. So anybody, anybody feel that way this morning? <laughs> Oh, only me, okay, <laughs> right, well that was for me then, so no, uh, I know that's not true, chicken, all right, <laughs> yeah, Father, uh, God, we are so grateful that even when we feel like uh, we're just hanging on uh, by the tips of our fingernails that, God, you uh, still sustain us, God, you give us grace, and you give us peace, and you give us mercy, the Father, your promises, just because life uh, seems a little crazy and a little out of control, uh, God, uh, just because it feels that way, God, we recognize that your promises don't change. That, God, you are faithful to us. So, God, I pray this morning that we would just find rest, that we would find rest in your peace, that, God, we would find just a respite for our weary hearts just a place to, to feel safe and a place to relax, a place where uh, we know that uh, all that is uh, expected of us was fulfilled in your son, Jesus. God, this morning, we just wanna, we just wanna love you well. God, we wanna worship you. Father, we wanna be in tune with you as you would lead us. Father, as you're as, as the Holy Spirit speaks to us and as he changes our hearts, Father, we just want to be in step and in tune with you. And so, Lord, may this morning just be a part in that process. And, and again, Father, most of all, my prayer for today has been that, that those who are feeling weary and tired would just find rest in you. So I pray all that in your son Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen, amen. series this morning. Uh, we're just going to take a walk through the book of Galatians, uh, a great, great book. Uh, the, the, theme, the theme for the book of Galatians uh, is something that 
uh, is just, I think, so significant and so important for us as believers to understand. There's this struggle, of course, I think even in our nation, right, uh, going on right now, trying to define what is, what is, what is our freedom going to look like going forward as a nation. You know, freedom is such an important topic to us. And Paul, I think, addresses this, this topic of freedom in the book of Galatians. Uh, and a, a theme, just as I was reading through and studying, I think is this, that we are set free, so we are to live free. Jesus has purchased our freedom, that he has given us freedom. And so, so our call, our, 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 our call as believers, as followers of Jesus, is to live out that freedom. So really, that's kind of going to be our path forward over the next uh, six weeks or so as we explore Paul's letter to the Galatians. And so uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of background uh, on the book of Galatians. So I think Galatians, so there's a little bit of debate, you know, theologians love to debate these things that really are not that significant, but there's a lot of debate over uh, when exactly the book of Galatians was written. I think personally it was probably one of Paul's very earliest letters, maybe one of the first letters that he wrote, okay? And uh, it is written uh, to these churches in uh, this region called Southern Galatia, all right, to the cities of Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. These are churches that Paul visited on his very first missionary journey. So this letter is a letter to these churches. And I think if we were to kind of pick out like a key verse in the book of Galatians, it would be this. Uh, For freedom, Christ set us free. Stand firm then and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. And that's from chapter 5. And verse one, and I think in a lot of ways that really sums up Paul's, Paul's hope for this letter is that the Galatians would understand what it means uh, to, to be free in Christ, to be set free by him. So what, what was the issue? Like uh, so often as Paul writes these letters, he, he definitely has kind of a mission in mind. He's got something, he's got some burr under his saddle. He's got something that he wants to address. And so we, 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 we looked at this earlier in the book of Acts, where uh, as the church started in, in Acts chapter 2, right, as the church was birthed by the coming of the Holy Spirit, man, the churches grew exponentially until the Romans decided enough is enough, and they began to, to persecute the Christian church. And that drove out all of these Jewish Christians from Jerusalem. And so all of these Christians went all over the Roman Empire and began to, to spread the gospel, right? And the Christian church, it just began to grow and grow. And so there are all these churches all over the Roman Empire that have been established. And Paul visited some of those churches on his first, second, third missionary journeys. But one of the things that kind of cropped up in a lot of these Roman churches uh, was this group of people called Judaizers. Right? So a lot of these believers in these, in these churches were, were Greeks. They were not Jews. And so they, they knew about the gospel. Uh, they, they knew what it meant to, to follow Jesus. But these, these Jewish Christians, these Judaizers, began to come into these non-Jewish Christian churches, and they began to tell these, these Christians that, look, if you really want to follow Jesus, number one, you need to be circumcised, and number two, you need to follow the law of Moses. And Paul's intent in writing this book to the Galatians is, look, <laughs> that is not why Jesus died for you, all right? That the law was never intended to save you. And we kind of talked about this as we talked about the covenants, right? That, that Jesus was the fulfillment of the law, that he fulfilled the old covenant, all right? And, and the intention of the law was never that it would save anyone, and Jesus has set us free that, 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 that slavery to the, to the law is, is exactly that. It's enslavement. But Jesus has given us freedom. And I think that this letter, like, it's, it's so important to maybe even where we're at as believers today. Maybe we don't think a lot about being enslaved to the law, but there are so many things that enslave us, I think, as believers I think it's just such an such a important topic that we look at and, and understand. 
And so uh, as we just kind of hop in here to uh, chapter one of the book of Galatians, we're just going to look at the first few verses this morning. And this is kind of a, in a lot of ways, kind of a typical greeting by the Apostle Paul. As he, as he writes this letter, he's writing it not to a person, not to a single church, but to a whole region of churches who are experiencing this. And so let's read Galatians chapter five, verses one, or sorry, Galatians chapter one, verses one through five. And if we were to kind of, kind of pinpoint a theme, just even in these first five verses, something that, that Paul is maybe trying to uh, just, as he begins, even in his just initial introduction, I would say that he's trying to tell us that we are free, that we are free in God's church, or in God's truth. And so let's look at these first five verses, starting in verse one of the book of Galatians. So if you've got your Bible, go there. Galatians chapter one, verse one. Paul, an apostle, not from men or by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with me. To the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so even in these first few verses, I think Paul is trying to, to tell us something about the freedom that we have in God's truth, right? In, in verse one, Paul writes this. He says, Paul, an apostle, not from men or by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, all right? We are free in God's truth, number one, because the message of freedom comes by God's authority. The message of truth, it comes by God's authority, right? So one of the issues that Paul is going to address here in the book of Galatians is his apostleship. Some of these Judaizers were, were questioning whether Paul was even an apostle, right? That what, what he was, whether or not what he was speaking was even the truth. And what Paul wants to establish here and point out is that, that he's an apostle, that, that, he's a, that he's a messenger, not by his choice, but because he was chosen by God, not by men, all right? Not by some prophet, not by the Pope, <laughs> all right? Not, he, he, God was not, or Paul was not chosen by, by any man, all right? The message of freedom, it comes by God's authority, not man's. The good news, the truth of the gospel is powerful. It changes people's hearts. It changes people's lives. Not because uh, some, some, some person with eloquent words. Not because uh, somebody really important shared that message. But because of God's authority. Because of the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, he says, My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not be based on human wisdom, but on God's power. Oop, there we go. But on God's power. The, the power of the gospel, okay, it doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from any man. It comes from God himself. And Jesus said this to his disciples. He says, so if the Son sets you free, you really will be free. If who sets you free? The Son. If Jesus sets you free, then you truly will be free. All right? The message of freedom comes by God's authority, not by man's. So this guy right here, Dr. Hyman Jedediah Appleman. You ever known anybody with a name even remotely close to that? You ever known a Hyman Jedediah? <laughs> all right, this guy, this guy got the party started for me, all right? This guy, Dr. Appleman, when I was about 12 years old, he was uh, probably in his 80s at that point. 
he showed up at this church that I was attending. Uh, he was an evangelist. He traveled the world. He was born in Russia to uh, Jewish parents. When he was uh, still pretty young, he left his Jewish faith behind and became a believer. His father disowned him. And uh, he began to pursue Jesus and travel the world just sharing the gospel. And just one Sunday, he showed up at this church that I was attending and just so clearly laid out the gospel. All right, Dr. Hyman Jedediah Appleman. Would God's purpose have been completed in my life had Dr. Appleman never showed up? Absolutely. I believe that without any shadow of a doubt. All right, it's, it's God's purpose, it's God's will, it's the power of the gospel to change my life. It wasn't Dr. Appleman, although I'm forever grateful that he was faithful, that he did what God asked him to do, that God worked through him, All right? But it wasn't because of him, it was the power of the gospel. I think sometimes maybe we're reluctant to allow God to, to work through us in that way because we're afraid, right? We're afraid we might say the wrong thing. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to, I might, I might screw it up if I try to share the gospel with somebody, right? I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I'll leave that to Chris and to Jim Webb and <laughs> you know, these the professionals, right? No. All right, God wants to, wants to work through you we talked about that when we talked about the covenants, that God, God has chosen to partner with us in this whole endeavor, all right? Go into all the world and make disciples. It's part of our mission statement, all right? It's part of the church's mission, and it wasn't just to the disciples, it is to the whole church, and that's you, right? The, the, the message of the gospel uh, brings freedom by God's authority, all right, and maybe, maybe the first time you share it with somebody, you explain it, or you, you try to tell them, you know, what God has done in your life. Maybe you don't get it perfect, right? Maybe you leave out some details, all right? That's okay. God is going to, to work through you and use you. Don't be afraid to step out and allow God to, to use you. It's by his authority, not by man's, okay? It's not... It's not all dependent on what you say or how you say it or you get all the spiritual laws in the right order or, or maybe you forget a scripture reference or, or whatever. God can still use you. Because the message of freedom, it comes by God's authority, not by ours. And then in verse three, Paul says this. He says in his, and this is kind of a pretty typical greeting for the Apostle Paul. You read this in, in a lot of his letters, you know, the letter to the Philippians, uh, his letter to, to the Romans. He says in verse three, grace to you and peace from God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God. All right, the message of freedom, it brings grace and it brings peace. Paul knew that. That's why he started all these letters the same way. Because the message of freedom, the gospel message, the truth of the gospel, it ought to bring grace and it ought to bring peace into our lives. Right? These two words, grace and peace, they are super, super significant words in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. So in the New Testament, this word grace uh, is, is the Greek word uh, charis, right? It means undeserved acceptance and love received from another. Right? If you understand grace from the Bible's perspective, in a nutshell, it means undeserved acceptance and love received from another. Originally, the word in, in Old Greek referred to something delightful or beautiful in a person, a thing, or an act which brought pleasure to others. When the Old Testament was translated into Greek, charis was used to translate the, the Hebrew word chen, and thus in biblical Greek, it came to be associated with this definition, right? Undeserved acceptance and love from one another. This word, and it shows up 150 times in the New Testament. 150 times. 
that God has shown grace to us, that he gives us grace, that we're to extend grace to others, right? Undeserved acceptance and love received from God, given and received by others from us. The second uh, word is the word peace, irene, right, in the Greek. And it is the, it, it's translated from the Hebrew word shalom, right, and basically means this, a condition or sense of harmony, well-being, and prosperity. But this is, this is a huge word, right? This is like a series of sermons by itself. This, this word peace is so so significant, especially in the, in the Old Testament. It's, it's one of the, the, the pivotal words, I would say, in, in all of the New Testament. It shows up 180 times throughout the Old Testament, all right, that, that, that God has given us peace, that peace has been made between us and God. So it doesn't only mean like the ceasing of hostility, like if you were fighting with your wife on the way to church this morning, but now it's peaceful where you're sitting, <laughs> all right? <laughs> it doesn't just mean that, okay? It means just this, this sense that all is kind of right in the world. The sense of well-being. It occurs in every single book in the New Testament except the book of 1 John. Kind of communicates this idea, this sense of being safe and secure. So when, when, when Paul writes this greeting, when he says, grace to you and peace from God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking about this grace and this peace that, that come from, from knowing Jesus. That we receive that, but we also, all right, that's also something that comes from us. Not only should the message of freedom feed grace and peace into our lives, but in turn, the message of freedom seasoned with grace and peace should flow out of our lives. This is a principle I think we consistently see throughout Scripture. Jesus, and Jesus made this point over and over in so many ways. He says, we are to forgive others. Why? Because we've been forgiven, right? When Jesus in Matthew chapter 10 sends out the disciples, Right, so he's been mentoring these guys and then, he's, and then he sends them out. He says, okay, I want you to go do the things that I've been doing. I want you to raise the dead. I want you to heal the sick. I want you to cast out demons. And he says to them, I want you to do this because uh, freely, I want you to freely give because you have freely received. As grace and as peace flow into our lives, that ought to be something that flows out of our lives. I love uh, Bob Goff, I don't know if you know who Bob Goff is. He's a, uh, he's a, he's a wonderful author. He, uh, he, he writes just a lot of really encouraging stuff. And I, I've heard him speak before. I read some of his books. He's got a brand new book out called Dream Big. All right, it's a great book. We talked a little bit uh, last week about finding your dreams, about pursuing the dreams, the things that God puts into your heart and your life. That's a great, great read. And this is just kind of a side note too, right? Okay, so... I want to encourage you, if, if you're not a reader, that's okay, right? Not everybody loves to read. That's not how everybody spends their time. You know, uh, like one of my, the favorite tools on my smartphone is uh, my audiobook file. I, have list, I listen all the time to, to these books. You, you should download one of those apps, all right? And uh, Audible is the one that I use. You can buy the audio version, and uh, it's fun to listen to Bob Goff read this book uh, called Dream Big. All right, just a little commercial. I don't get any money from Bob for advertising. All right, but uh, here's what Bob has to say about finding peace. So my life is usually working just terrific for me. And when somebody says to me, how's it going? I go like, awesome. I think a better question to ask is, how is your life working for the people around you? That's a great way to measure peace. If your life is working for the people around you, you'll see it in their faces. You'll see it in your conversations. They're, they're actually experiencing peace because you're not whipping up a lot of things. Now you can talk about difficult things and still feel peace because people feel safe 
around you, having difficult conversations. So I don't want you to think of peace as just like, yeah, whatever. It's the opposite of yeah, whatever. It's a life fully engaged. I love that, right? That was, that really made me have to stop and think because, you know, I get, I get pretty intense sometimes, right? I, I love to, to work and uh, I know it drives my wife crazy sometimes because I'm just, it seems like I'm always, my brain is always going, I'm always moving, I'm always wanting to get things done. And uh, I had to think, man, you know, <laughs> do I communicate peace to the people around me? I mean, I may feel okay with that, but man, but what is my, what is my heart and what is my life communicating. If you're not experiencing grace and peace, then you certainly are going to have a hard time giving grace and peace. Amen? I think at no time is that maybe more uh, of a significant and important message than today, right? I mean, all of the ridiculousness, all of the divisiveness, all of the controversies going on politically. I think the, the, the enemy just wants to, to use those things to divide us, to divide even the church, right? Uh, I, as, as, I'm, as I was reading through the book of Galatians, and a uh, little spoiler alert, right? So if you move forward to, to chapter 5, Paul, Paul says this to the Galatians. He says in ver- verse 14, for the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, Love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law, right? So the Galatians are all worried about fulfilling the law of Moses. And, and, and Paul says, look, and, he, and he's quoting what Jesus said earlier, right? The whole law is fulfilled in this one statement. Love your neighbor as yourself. That the most important part of your calling as a follower of Jesus, and I want you to understand this, okay? Okay? The most important thing that you will ever do is to love the people around you well. To love them the way that Jesus loved the people around him. That is our calling, right? The world gets caught up in all of these other things that are such a distraction to that thing, to our calling to love. We have a higher calling, all right? We ought not to get all wrapped up in all of these things, all right? When, when we're willing to destroy relationships to make a point politically, folks, that's wrong. When you're willing to trash somebody online, all right, because maybe they don't agree with you, and maybe they are wrong, okay? Maybe they're just completely dead wrong, all right? Love them through that. Communicate grace and peace in your conversation, just a reminder, this is what Paul said love looks like. And if I give away, Paul says, all my possessions, and if I give over my body in order to boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Do you get that? It doesn't matter what you do or what you give away or how great you are. If you do not love well, you have gained nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not irritable, and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. All right? This is what our relationship with the people around us ought to look like. It is a high calling. It is a difficult calling but it is what we are called to. I think the the enemy would distract us from that calling. Be careful. Tread lightly. Treat the the hearts and lives of the people that you interact with as, as valuable, as precious. They are to God, right? And finally, in verse four, Paul reminds us, he says, uh, grace and peace to you from God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, verse four, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from this present evil age according to the will 
of our God and Father. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. He gave himself for our sins to rescue us from this present age. I love the, wall, with the way that, that Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. All right. Uh, well, so this is uh, the third point here, the message of freedom. It rescues us. It, it rescues us, simply. It's, 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 it's been a lifeline to us. You know, when I was in college, I took uh, the Red Cross uh, lifeguarding uh, class and got my certification. And so, you, you know, you, you learn how to, to throw somebody a lifeline, to be a lifeline to somebody. God has, has done that for us. He has rescued you and I. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, Paul says, for the word of the cross is foolishness, to those who are perishing, but it is the power of God to us who are being saved. By his power, he has saved us. Those who, do, who don't know Jesus, those who uh, refuse to, to give their lives over to him, they, they're blinded, they're enslaved to this world and to their sin. And they need rescuing, okay? The message of freedom, man, it has rescued us. The world is enslaved by sin. Unfortunately, I think sometimes it, it, it is even a difficult thing for us who, who have been saved, right? Who have been rescued, who know the power of the cross and the power of God's love. We still, at times, struggle with going back to enslavement to sin, one last video clip. I love this uh, little skit. I think it's a great illustration of how, how even as believers, sometimes we find ourselves kind of re-enslaved by our sin. Hey, Kat. Jesus. Oh, it's been a long time. Yeah, um, I didn't expect to see you here. Whoa, uh, what's that smell? The smell? Oh, um, well, that's my trash. I just, I'm a little embarrassed about it. Oh, well... Is that why you've been avoiding me? Avoiding you? I, I, I haven't really been avoiding you. I just, you know, I don't, I don't want to get close to you. I mean, I, I just, I don't want you to smell it. I'll take it, Kat. Come oh, on. Oh, no, 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 that's okay. I mean, I made it. It's my trash. You know, I should carry it. It's, it's, it's okay. Yeah, but Kat, I mean, this is my job. Right. I take people's trash. That's what I do, so. Right, okay, well, maybe I could go and just clean it up a little bit, you know, and then I'll just, I'll come back. No, Kat, I don't need you to do that. Um, okay, I'll take it from you so you don't have to carry the weight. Oh, well, I... Come on. Uh, oh, just, just hand it over. Uh, all, right? all right? Let go. Let go. Yes, yeah? Just, yeah? Yeah? Uh, How's that feel? Weird. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah, just loosen it up a Whoa, little bit. check that out. I don't know if I've ever moved like that before. Well, I mean, that is crazy. I just, I feel so free and alive. I, it's I mean, the lack of trash. Wow, it's just like... This is the craziest feeling I have ever had. I just, it's like something's missing, you know? Well, I just, um, get used I, to feeling free, because that's yeah. what you are now. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, what okay. are you doing? I just, I gotta get one thing, okay? Hold on just a minute Get here. one thing? No, 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 don't open the bag! Jesus, thank you so much for your sacrifice. I really appreciate all that you've done for me. What's going on here, Kat? What? Look, I'll take the trash, but you need to put that back. Oh, um, no, actually, um, that's okay. This is mine. It's my piece. I want to keep it. No, it goes right back in the bag, so I'll help you. Here, no, 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 put no, no. it here. No, Jesus, I, I need to remind myself not to make more trash. I mean, that just Kathleen, makes sense. Kathleen, I will remind you not to make more trash, oh, okay? Oh, well, Jesus, you know... That's what I do. I mean, we'll walk together. I know, but I should be in a better place than this by now. I mean, I just... I'm constantly doing things wrong, you know, and I, I'm just, I'm constantly letting you down. No, the only thing that's letting me down is, is, is you taking the stuff back. Okay. Look, I took care of the trash before you even created it. Oh. Look, don't you see what's happening? Every time I take your trash away, you come back and, and take another piece. And the more pieces you carry around, the more trash you attract. It reeks. Cat. When I look at you, I don't see your sin. I see you, the real you, the free you. This is what I'm fighting for. This is what I died for. Jesus, I'm sorry. I just, 
please forgive me. I've already forgiven you. The question is, will you forgive yourself? Paul encourages us, us to uh, throw off the sin that so easily enslaves so that we can run the race with endurance. Because God has rescued us. He's freed us from those things. And that is, that is the message of freedom. That is the message of the gospel. That is the truth of God's message. So let me give you three things this morning just as we wrap up. Three things that you can do. Uh, number one, uh, I want to encourage you this morning. Man, add, add a name. This may seem random, right? But add a name to the, to the board back here and begin praying. Right? God, God wants to work powerfully in the life of somebody that you're connected to. And he wants to work through you to accomplish that. If you haven't, you, you know somebody that knows Jesus or doesn't know Jesus, excuse me. You know someone who doesn't know him but needs to know him. Put that name up there on the board so we can begin praying for them to be reminded that you can start praying for them. So you should do that today if you haven't done that. Number two, uh, be aware uh, of your actions and your words this week. Are they seasoned with grace and peace? And number three, take time to thank God for rescuing you. Do you tell him that? You should tell him that daily. God, thank you for your sacrifice for me. Thank you for rescuing me. Three simple things that I think we can do. Uh, just looking at the first five verses here in the book of Galatians. I'm looking so forward to talking more about uh, freedom and about the freedom that God gives us in our relationship with him. Let's pray. Father God, this morning, thank you for your word. God, thank you for the message of freedom that we find in you. God, I pray that we'll find uh, just rest and peace in those words. Uh, that, Father, uh, the encouragement that comes from knowing that we, we've been freed, that we've been freed by you, ought to just give us rest this morning. And I pray that would be the case for, for everyone who's here in this room. Father, everyone who's watching online this morning, that they would just find peace in their freedom with you. God, that is my prayer. I pray it all in your son, Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Tim? Hey, how you doing? I'm fantastic. Good. Well, hey, uh, <laughs> just before we wrap up today, so excited to have a bunch of kids uh, down in that wing. I, I was walking down there, and you can hear all the little screams and laughs and all those things. So it's been, man, almost a year since we've done that. So excited to have kids down there. If you checked in, kids, today, just a quick reminder, you should have got a map that looks like this uh, on your way in. If you uh, happen to lose that in the meantime, uh, there's more of those out on the info desk. But uh, for pickup today, pickup going to happen at 10.15. So kids are in class until 10.15, and then they will uh, start kind of uh, lining them up to get dismissed. And the way you do that is you drive around to the west side of the building. There'll be some cones, and that'll kind of clearly direct you where you can park, and then uh, somebody will come up and grab your kid for you, and that'll eliminate some of the crowding that happens in those narrow hallways down there. So appreciate your, uh, your flexibility uh, as we've gotten used to this past year, just uh, doing things a little bit differently. So we're, we're trying to do that to keep everybody safe. And uh, again, if you're, uh, if you're here, if you're online and you have kids, first service uh, K through five, second service K through three in person uh, next week. would love to see you guys there. So don't forget, pick your kids up in your car. At 1015. At 1015, yeah. So you got, you got a few minutes. That's it, awesome. Well, unless, we have... unless you keep talking for 15 <laughs> minutes. But... <laughs> Which you know I could probably do. I could probably pray for the next 15 minutes. You, you could. Even you know. could. But I do have one more thing. Come on up, Jen. This one sucks. So, uh, I wanted to uh, just let you all know this morning, uh, Jennifer has submitted her letter of resignation. She's going to be leaving us, and uh, we're all very, very sad about that. But uh, Jennifer, you just, 
it's hard to understand probably sometimes like the, the impact that some of the staff have behind the scenes. So much, you know, of, of what happens, I mean, from the things on the screen to the things you see on social media to all of these great programs, uh, you know, those are all the brainstorms and the, uh, the effort of our amazing staff. And Jen has had a huge part in all of those things, and she's had a great impact on the ministry here at New Hope. And so we are really sad to see you going. <laughs> But uh, I know Jen's got, she's got some great things uh, on the horizon. Uh, I know you've, you're working on your MDiv right now, your Masters of Divinity, which is uh, no small task. And uh, you're going to be doing an internship with Joe Saxton, which is pretty cool. If you don't know who Joe is, she's a, uh, she's a pretty cool lady. And uh, she's got some great books and some great materials out. And I know you're going to be working with her. So besides raising your kids and, you know, doing all this other stuff. So I know you're, you've got a lot to keep you busy, but uh, we're going to miss you. And uh, so I just want to say thank you for... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I miss you all too. I will be here still through the end of the month, so yes. you'll see me. End of the month, uh, Jen will be here through the, the end of January, and then, uh, and then she's not like, going to evaporate off the planet. She'll be around. So. And uh, anyway, so we just want to let you guys all know that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a downer way to end the morning. But in the same token, we are really excited about what God has for you because I know he's going to use you in some amazing ways. Thank so, you. All right. Well, thank you all this morning for being here, and uh, you can give, yeah, that's for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you may not want to give Jen a hug. I mean, maybe you do, but uh, yeah, just to the yeah, air hugs, there you go. All right, well, everybody, thank you for, for being here this morning. Hope you have uh, an amazing week. As always, I'm going to be down here, down front, and would love to pray with you if there's something I can pray for you about. Have a great week. <laughs>